from Beyonce at the Super Bowl to Lana Del Rey for Skims, Renee Rapp for Sweet Green, it seems like we have finally started to see creativity really come through in advertising in a way that should have happened decades ago. You know, one of the things I always say in my videos is like, the way you treat your product is the way your audience will treat you. And if you treat it like an annoying ad, people are gonna scroll right past it, right? But if you treat it like an editorial shoot or a magazine cover, then people will be as excited to see that as they would on the cover of the magazine. And to me, that is why the best campaigns don't feel like ads. They focus on the art and the creativity and focusing on the talent of how can we draw a bridge from their audience and their community? And how can we fit into that? Not how can we try and force this person to fit some vision that doesn't feel organic and authentic? So we thought it would be fun to do an episode on what are some of the best ad campaigns? Like, why did Beyonce Super Bowl do so well? Why did Lana Del Rey Skims do so well? Even recent Hailey Bieber phone case. And we've com compiled some really favorite examples that we're excited to analyze and just dive into today. Welcome back to the Share Your Screen podcast. Hi, my name is Nikki. Hi, I'm Coco. And we are so excited to be back with you all this week. Yes, we are so happy to be here. We're going to have a Vegas vlog going up possibly before this episode airs. I'm oh my God, this weekend. go look at the Vegas vlog. It was crazy. Also, thank you for like running up the Super Bowl commercial ideas. I feel like that is part of the reason like we went. that ended up happening. I at the very least, it's like it was involved some way. You know what I mean? I think so. And hopefully maybe next year we'll be in a Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> I don't even need to be in it. I would just love to like work on one. Honestly, like that yeah. would be such a cool milestone to be like yeah. you created something that like got to that scale. I know. It, yeah. And that's why I'm so excited for this episode to like dive into it. And also just we want to touch on like some pop culture news. This episode is going to feel very like OG-esque of Share Your Screen. Remember we <laughs> yeah. would sit on Nikki's couch, just one camera mm -hmm. and just talk about what was trending. Like I I, I do love those videos and I think that's what this is going to be. I know. And sometimes so much stuff happens so fast yeah. that it's like, I love doing one topic per episode. It's really great that yeah. we can go so deep and do so much research. But then also I feel like I'm doing a disservice that I'm like, oh my God, so many things that I like want to talk about and yeah. I want to talk with you and share with you guys that like we can't do in that way. So yeah. I'm really excited to have something where we can like touch on so many things that happened. Exactly. And then next episode will be the Coachella effect. So if you guys subscribe and also jump in the discord and the comments here, let us know what your thoughts are on Coachella. Do you love it? Do you hate it? We're going to do a full deep dive of yeah. the history. The history. And also I'm fascinated in like the business because mm -hmm. did you know like Coachella lost, I think $20 million its first four years. Wow. It was, it made no money and almost went bankrupt multiple times, ended up having to get like bailed out, but then is now like the biggest musical festival in the entire year. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like such a, a cool like zero to 100 story that I'm we excited love. to dive, in, dive into it. We love those stories. <laughs> yeah. So I you put one about Bratz that I'm so curious to hear about. Okay. the Have you seen the Bratz Instagram? You showed it to me for the first time and my jaw hit the floor. They are probably one of my favorite branded accounts because what the Bratz Instagram does is – Anytime there's any sort of like trending pop culture moment, I don't mm -hmm. know who is on their team making these images, but they're good. They will put out a brat stall that looks like the a carbon copy of whatever's happening. So they have a Lana Del Rey and they did multiple skims campaigns. <laughs> yeah. They had Zendaya's red carpet look. They have Beyonce, Texas Hold'em. They had Miley Cyrus at the, Miley Cyrus at the Grammys. And my favorite was... They did one with Pamela Anderson when she went viral on the red carpet for not wearing makeup. And they somehow made the brat stall look like Pamela Anderson with no makeup. Dude, that's crazy. And yeah. I think the smartest brands realize they don't need to be the most interesting thing at all times. Like yeah. this is the beauty of just riding the wave of internet culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're like Lana Del Rey went viral for her campaign. Great. Let's make a brats of it. That's our tie in <laughs> and the audience will do the rest. You know right. what I mean? And it's so they create like they really go for these distinct looks because I think they know copyright laws they can't say this is skim from Lana <laughs> yeah. Del Rey yeah, but yeah. they'll make a doll that looks enough like the campaign and then have a little hint in the caption so the audience can figure out who they're referencing so they're do they're adding this like creative value they're not saying they are skims or taking away from it they're just like adding this new value and like something that I love about Bratz is the the biggest buzzword besides authenticity I want to cry every time I hear someone bring up <laughs> authenticity I'm like okay 
and I believe in it. It just it's a it's overused. But another one that's overused is community. Mm. So many people in conversation, in meetings, in videos say build a community. But what does that mean? Everyone, I know, or or they're yeah. like, I love building community. What How? What did you do to do that? You exactly. know what I mean? Like, it's just, you can't just say it. <laughs> it's a buzzword. I think also people use that word because they don't want to feel vain and be like, I want followers. Yeah. They go, I want a community. Right. That makes sense. So the way that when I'm consulting or talking to brands or a public figure, I always say, if you want someone to be a part of your community, you have to create content on your profile that people can engage with and enjoy, even if they are not buying a product from you. Mm. So the moment that you're, like, because then it becomes a transaction, not right. a community. So me, I've never bought a brat stall in my life. Maybe I will now, but I love their, they're my favorite Instagram. I'm a part yeah. of that community. And it's like, that's what a social media's job is, is to build a community. And then eventually people will want to buy the product because they feel like they've gotten so much free value from you. Yeah. And also I think going off what you said, couldn't agree more about value, but I also think value is kind of one of those buzzwords yeah. where people are like, add value. And Content I always like king. to say value is entertainment, education, inspiration, or motivation. If you don't know how your content is doing one of those four things, it does not have value, right? Brats, this is entertainment. It's mm -hmm. art. It's beautiful. What we do might not be super entertaining or inspiring, yeah. but it's very educational. You yeah. know what I mean? And understanding when you are one or multiple of those things. And if you can't see that clearly, then you need to be going another direction. That I love that. That's such a good way to put it. And, um, and, and it makes me think of too, what falls under that. And I think I always say like, this is the best brand to do. I don't even want to say social media. I think they've transcended it. Red Bull. Mm. Red Bull has a rule on their socials that you cannot post a photo or a video of someone drinking out of a Red Bull can. I challenge anyone watching this video, go onto Red Bull social medias, Instagram, Facebook, you know, Twitter, whatever you prefer, X, TikTok, tell me how long it takes you to scroll before you see a Red Bull can. <laughs> You're not gonna yeah. find a Red Bull can. They're posting people snowboarding, mm -hmm. skydiving. They don't, they're not, they're adding value outside of their product. Absolutely. I call this the community over commodity effect. Ooh. I talked about this in a video about our place, but I think uh, Red Bull does it so well, which is this idea of like, if you try and say, look at our product, look how great it is, blah, blah, blah. That's honestly a red flag. Yeah. Like I, if you have to say that you are a nonstick pan yeah. or that Red Bull gives you wings 30 times, I'm like, what are you overcompensating for? Yeah. But instead, if you focus on who is our target audience? Like, what is the community? What is their common interest? How do we make content around that community, yeah. right? So it's not just commodifying somebody drinking a Red Bull. It's like Red Bull gives you wings. Energy drinks are drunk, drinking a lot by athletes or mm -hmm. people at the gym. Therefore, our entire feed will be extreme sports, athletics, so-and-so. Our place, it's a pan company. They don't yeah. talk about, look at our nonstick pan. Isn't it so cool? Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. They just show like recipe content and cooking videos. So they got, they built like 500,000 followers of all people who are obsessed with food and like yeah. to cook. So guess what? They eventually buy a pan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like reverse engineering. Like who is your target audience? What do they care about? How do you make content about what they care about? And then after that, they will care about you. I love that. That's yeah. That's such a good way to put it. I think of it as like, and I, the, our place example is so great. Like their socials, their cooking channels that happen to sell pans. Exactly. And like Red Bull, I think is a sports entertainment company that happens to sell drinks. Like exactly. I bet you Red Bull's marketing meetings is them talking about how to compete with ESPN and Fox Sports and mm. Netflix. They're not talking about no offense like you know they're not talking about monster energy they're, <laughs> yeah. like i don't think they think that that's their competitor i think they think they're an entertainment brand who happens to sell drinks right and i think it's such a great way like they can so easily just get a new audience by focusing on like a new sport mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. randomly i feel like golf has been like mm. so trendy in the past year and it's like okay now they can make videos about golf or something and get yeah. that audience they don't have to like beg and pander to people it's just yeah. like Oh, you're interested in this thing? Okay, now we can also cover that thing. Yeah, I love that. Do you have any others? Oh, I think the Lana Del Rey and Skims set the bar for what it means to work with an artist on a creative direction campaign. Like, I absolutely loved that instead of forcing her to say some cringy line or endorse a product, they looked at her brand as an artist. 
what is she known for? She is known for having these very heart-wrenching songs about heartbreak. She's kind of like the queen of this uh, melodramatic, heartbreak, poppy sound. So instead of, you know, doing some love thing, it's like Cupid can take the day off was the slogan of the campaign. And I was like, oh, that's so good. Like it's not leaning into trying to force her to say something. And also they had such organic tie-ins to her catalog. Like her being in a blue velvet heart box when she has a song called Blue Velvet or when she was wearing that like black um, veil, like a mm -hmm. wedding veil. And she has a song called Black Beauty. And I'm like, oh, this is like the perfect thing that only a true fan will pick up on. But that's why they'll send it to the group chat. That's why they'll post it to the fan account, share it to their story, is because they're picking up these breadcrumbs. And we've talked about, too, like how I think a lot of times the best campaigns don't try to hit the home run. Their goal is like, how do we pitch a softball? And let somebody else, the audience, like see something, place these yes. Easter eggs for them to make the viral tweet about it. And then we get millions and millions of free promotion. Yeah. And it makes me think, too, like right now with I mean, I still love buying magazines, but they're kind of this like traditional franchise that's maybe on its way out. And it's so cool that I think what Skims is doing is instead of like focusing on just being product focused, which they have great products. I I have Skims dresses and boyfriends around the world rejoice at Skims <laughs> dresses. Like my boyfriend's always yeah. like, will you wear your Skims dress? But on top of that, it's like now I almost wonder if the Lana Del Rey Skims campaign that you're describing and that was all over socials, it almost felt like it was like an editorial shoot. Like it was yeah. almost like a Vogue shoot or like a Harper's Bazaar that Instead, it was actually skims, though. It wasn't. Right. It's was so cool. Or it's like if you're working with an artist, the photos should be good enough to be an album cover. And oh. if not, then you're not doing it right. That is such a good way to. I think Skims is really good at these editorial. Mm -hmm. Even like photos. the Ice Spice and Nessa Barrett ones last mm -hmm. year, I thought were so good. All in those like tan yeah. suits in the background. Yeah, no, I think that another great call that Skims has made is not making Kim Kardashian the face of it as much mm -hmm. anymore because I think that the celebrity craze around brands and the Kim Kardashians kind of led the spearhead of that in the last 10, 15 years. But I think they're realizing that like when you make one person the face of a brand, it can falter. I think we see that yeah. with Kylie Cosmetics and why Kylie's new brands that she's launching don't have her name in them. Mm -hmm. And I think Kim Kardashian was so smart for like, Instead, she makes these other celebrities the face of the moment, and you don't see Kim as often in these Skims campaigns. Yeah, and I think it gives her more longevity, too, because, mm -hmm. like, you get to be more of, like, a Rihanna. You know yes. what I mean? Where you don't always have to be the face of it, but every time she wants to be, it's crazy, and everybody's yeah. talking about it. But she can also ride the wave of, like, what other people are doing yeah. and be more behind the scenes. Yes. So um, I want you to give your, I'm so interested to hear, like, what are your thoughts on the Hailey Bieber phone case? Oh, my God. Nikki, like, sent me a voice memo, and I'm like, ah, like, we have Dude, to just dedicate. It's so good. It's so good. So I'm so mad at myself for not thinking of this idea because you know me, obsessed with chopstick. Obsessed with chopstick. And, obs smack. and have had many ideas about phone cases. Phone case? You're so right. Because my thoughts were, like, this year, like, one of my bingo cards was, like, someone's going to have... A phone case, but I I still think this could happen with me and Nikki. Call us a uh, case to fire someone. But I think that it was going to be a phone case for creators. It's so fascinating that this phone case was for, for anyone not knowing, Hailey Bieber put out this genius phone case where it's like also a holder for her peptide lip mm -hmm. um, gloss. And... One, I think phone cases are the absolute best real estate, not just for the person using it because your phone is the number one. You use your phone case more than toilet paper. You use your phone case more than food that day. Yeah. You touch your phone all the time, so it's on your mind. Also, when people are taking selfies in the mirror. That's the genius Real of it. estate. That's the genius of it. Yes. Millions of dollars worth of free promotion. Also, I was thinking, like, even when you leave your house now, yeah. there is really nothing you need more than like phone case and lip gloss exactly. because you want to drive somewhere you can call uber you need to buy something you have apple pay like the phone has really become this like holy grail object of our time like the yeah. phone can do anything and mm -hmm. that's why we are so attached to it like we literally feel this need to, like i pay my bills on my phone even yeah. you know what i mean so like the idea of 
again, I think like if you want to be memorable, you have to tie yourself into something that people see every day, mm -hmm. that they interact with every day. And what better than something like a phone case? Yeah. Exactly what you said. And another thing that I thought was genius about this was like, it's not just that it's like a holder. Mm -hmm. It's like a holder specifically for her product. I know. Which means that you, if you own the phone case, you can't buy any other lip gloss. Yep. So it makes it a lot. You are now a lifelong customer, mm -hmm. essentially, if you own the phone case. And I think we're going to see like the genius of this is not even that she wants people to buy the phone case is that she wants to send it out as PR to yeah. a bunch of people and that now every influencer one you're talking about the stories like taking pictures and two it makes it so like they will just keep buying it yeah over and over and over again to fill also like because yeah you have to keep filling the like once you're done using the peptide and it's out you have to buy a new one to fill the slot right because it looks case. weird exactly so it's so genius i could also see the only other thing that's similar to a phone that we use, but not even as often as the phone, I could see Hailey Bieber coming out with like the next thing will be like some sort of keychain mm. um, because like you just your keys in your phone are the only thing you need nowadays. That's a good one. Um, but you're right. Like she really ritualized her product with the what I mean, I say ritualized. I think of when I say ritualized is like you're the type of content creator that people watch your videos every morning or every night. She made it even more than a ritual. Your phone is just a constant. And so that was really fascinating. I actually tried to buy one of the phone cases and there's a wait list. Wow. You can't even get the phone case. And That's I wanted crazy. one. I know. So I, I saw um, even Benefit Cosmetics, another competitor brand to Hailey Bieber's Road did. It's becoming like a viral moment where mm -hmm. they posted a viral TikTok where it was someone, they just had like a regular phone case and they were just like taping the Benefit <laughs> like That's product. Funny. And then they were like walking around the offices if they were like, it's just... I don't know. There's, I'm very fascinated at Hailey Bieber and her team. Like they're really great at capturing these moments. Like I almost think that Hailey Bieber is running circles around other celebrities Dude, in a lot of I ways. I would love to have Hailey Bieber on the pod just to Hi, talk about Hailey. like marketing. Please. Like I want to even just like that, like that, like where did that idea come from? Yeah. What were the product designs? Like I would be so interested in that. I, she would be a great guest. And, uh, she also had like a really fascinating show where it was like in the bathroom and it was just like, I think she's just really smart in these ways. And there was even a TikTok that went viral that clearly like one of her friends filmed, but it looked like a fans, but they were in the box at the Super Bowl. So no one could get to her unless this was premeditated, mm -hmm. but it was like her taking the peptide thing off her phone case and like putting it on while sitting at the Super Bowl in the seats. And I'm like, that was obviously something like, plain, but it was just so smart. And then um, the last thing that I had on these notes is I think that Road Beauty should do a campaign with Pamela Anderson for a mm. no makeup look because Hailey Bieber is known for this like very natural, like Road is a very like skincare based. It's not heavy makeup. And Pamela Anderson is like really leading the charge. I mean, of course you had Alicia Keys and others, but like Pamela Anderson is showing that you can be like older on the red carpet with no makeup and look beautiful. Road would be so great for that. And like, I'm so glad, for example, Martha Stewart was on the cover of Sports Illustrated last year because I've been saying like, I think older women need to be the beauty influencers because they yeah. have tried every product. They've seen every trend come and go. They know what works. I will take beauty advice from an older woman way more than a 16 year old who just put on eyeliner for like the first few times. Like no hate to them. I've been the 16 <laughs> no, year old that literally. thought I knew everything. I'll take someone else. No, like you're, if you're, when you're 18, like your skin, you, you've been outside for five minutes, girl. Yeah. When somebody looks that good in their like fifties, sixties, I'm like, you need to drop the skincare routine yes. ASAP. ASAP. I think road beauty and Pamela Anderson would be like, this perfect cohesion. Yeah, I remember that Pamela Anderson moment. I also had an idea. Imagine if CeraVe did a campaign with Zendaya where they sent her to a bunch of red carpets. Like, she's always serving fashion, right? But instead, she just wears no makeup. <gasps> and the whole point of it is to show, like, it shows that no amount of makeup can ever compensate for a good skincare routine. Yeah. Like, you, if you are constantly putting on makeup, it's actually going to make your skin worse. But there's nothing more important than just, like, the base foundation of how your skin looks. Yes. So the idea of somebody, I think, sending someone to a red carpet like they did with Pamela Anderson, but a skincare brand to be oh. like, dude, look how good she looks. She doesn't even need anything because she uses our product. That would be so good. 
Um, do you have any other notes too about like the phone case that you want to add? I know. I just think it's amazing. And I, a plus, a, that's all I have to say. a plus and Haley, Nikki and Coco at gmail.com. We'll see if we can pencil <laughs> Nikki you and Coco in. at gmail.com. Um, I guess like something that I, I, I actually want to get into like some other pop culture things. So I want to sure. let you do more Super Bowl commercials before we pivot. Okay. I have one that's just like, I have been thinking about this. We were literally just talking about it before we started filming. Did you know it costs seven million dollars for thirty seconds of Super Bowl ad time, and it got me thinking: like, is that worth it? Seven million dollars for thirty seconds. If it's like a two-minute commercial, that's twenty-eight million minimum. Also, keep in mind the price goes up the closer it gets to halftime. <gasps> so I was thinking: like, okay, the Super Bowl this year got one hundred and twenty million views. If you hired 700 content creators with like a million followers at around 10k each in order to get 120 million views they would have to average at like 175k views each which is high but also in a commercial like you don't know if the people are actually watching or listening you True. get no ad target demographic there's no niche targeting right you can't target a specific like use case of the product there's no diversity of talent i'm like would it actually be a better use of your money to hire that many if 700 creators is so many i can't even name 700 creators i think that's the problem i think it would be seen i think the reason brands are spending this money it's the prestigiousness. It's the I think exclusive. So too. It's the flex of we're one of the 20 brands that got a slot. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the Super Bowl does have this sort of like clout around it too. We're mm -hmm. like, you know, there's going to be a Forbes article on all the, you know, campaigns and an exactly. ad age article and stuff like that. So there is this like snowball effect of it. But also I think like, who are you targeting with yeah. that? Like there are some brands that it does make sense, right? Like Pepsi and Coke are like known mm -hmm. for doing stuff like this because whether you're 70 or whether you're 10, a Coke is a Coke. You yeah. know, it's the same thing. But when it's something like even CeraVe doing a yeah. Super Bowl commercial, I was like, do you think that 60% of these people that are probably like heterosexual men in their 40s are like really looking for new skincare advice? That's, like yeah. I'm not sure that was the way to do it. And I think you make a great point, and that's why they went for Michael Sarah. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, I, I think that it would almost do more damage for a brand to work with like 700. Like, I, I love that you did the math because I think that's brilliant. Um, but I do think that like there's just this exclusiveness of like we were in the cool club. Like we could afford. Right. It's a flex. But, like we could afford. Right. And it, that's just a, what they're going It's a status symbol. Like Duolingo doing symbol. a Super Bowl commercial. It's like Duolingo has made it from Yes. That. Which I have to say what was the winner for me in the Super Bowl commercials this year were the brands that knew that people now watch commercials while on their phone. Yeah. And the examples of that was. First of all, my favorite was Duolingo because the commercial was so short. It was probably three seconds and it was like the duo bird. Yeah. And they're, they were just on screen and then their butt just grew. It was just like bink, which you'd be like, what does that mean? That's mm -hmm. so weird. Me and my boyfriend are on like an over a hundred day streak of Duolingo. And we, when that commercial came up, we each got a notification on our phone that said, no buts or excuses. Do your lesson now. And we did our lesson. And that was freaking, they knew people would be watching yeah. the Super Bowl on their phone. We got the notification. Boom. Um, another one, obviously you made a great video about it. Verizon and like Beyonce saying new music. They knew people would be on the, when the moment she said that I was refreshing her Instagram, I was refreshing her Spotify. Yep. I was like, where's the music? And then another one was just, I mean, this is probably why they do it. Cause it's so expensive, but Nick's cosmetics had one where it was like scan the QR code. And then it was the ad they really wanted to show, which was like not safe for work. But that one actually didn't really get talked about as much, which I'm curious I didn't, about. I didn't even know about it until this moment, I'm going to be honest. But yeah. I also think, weirdly, the Duolingo commercial only being five seconds kind of makes it more viral because it's this FOMO effect. Yeah. Like, I didn't know about it until you told me. And I was like, how did I miss that? I was watching the Super Bowl. Like, yeah. how did I not know? So what did I do? Instantly looked it up. So, like, that I think is really interesting, too, of, again, like, dangling the carrot but taking it away. Like, taking and it away. And being like, oh, your friend's going to tell you about this thing you missed out on. And now you're even more emotionally attached to go and find it out exactly and i think the best thing that duolingo ever did was have this cute mascot because 
I think there's something we need to get a mascot for sharing your screen, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a computer squishmallow or something, because it's, it's Gary in a suit like this. It's, yes. Our, be our best friend. We love you, Gary. And the reason being is every brand is so corporate and pushy and money hungry. But like, for some reason, when it comes from a cute neon owl, you're like, <laughs> okay, like take my money. Like, yes. I think there's just something there. Yes. But I do think like the Duolingofication of brands True. has gone too far. Duolingo does it great. But yes. why do I see a Heinz ketchup bottle with arms and legs? <laughs> why do I literally, I think there was one where it was like Old Spice deodorant. I was like, girl, I don't want my deodorant to sprout arms and legs. Like, I know. I'm not interested. This was already a, like an owl was already a living thing. Yes. That's why it makes sense. But these brands tried to be like, well, what if we just take our product and give it arms and legs? Yeah. I'm like, no, that's not interesting. Or like the Ice Spice commercial was like this new starry, mm -hmm. like seven up. And it was like, they had little lemons with like arms and stuff. It was just, I'm like, it's too much. And also I think once yeah. someone else has done it, it's so clear that they're trying to copy that it yeah. kind of makes you look cheap. Yeah, totally. Um, do you have any other like Super Bowl? Do I have a Super Bowl one? Um, I definitely do. I also think the reason that the Beyonce Super Bowl commercial went so viral is like people are really starting to get smart about understanding like you cannot manufacture virality. Right, like you can't just create something out of nowhere. We would and be out of a job if there yeah, was a no, there wouldn't be an entire marketing industry. Like you cannot plan it always. So the smartest brands realize they're like, what? How do we reverse engineer? How do we take our budget, our resources, our scale to support something that already exists that will go viral? Right, Beyonce releasing an album is going to break the internet every time. We know this by now. She is like one of the biggest stars of our generation. So like just being like, okay, this is going to break the internet. Let is, let's find a way to associate ourselves with that, breaking the internet, again, Verizon 5G, and then being like, okay, now this Beyonce audience is excited that we uplifted her. We gave her a spot on the Super Bowl to then like, debut her album. You know what I mean? Like that was such a, a perfect, I think, way of just understanding that if you support somebody that their their community cares about, then their community will also support you. Yeah. And but I think that was like the magic of it. They didn't try to like reinvent the wheel. You can tell they just kind of let Beyonce, like they probably reached out to Beyonce and Beyonce was like, well, I actually do have this thing coming out. And they weren't yeah. like, no, you have to put out a phone with us. They were like, okay, let's yeah, just create obvious. the campaign. Yeah, because she had to have written the album over the past year. Yeah. Like she was thinking about yes. this. And I have one last one. Let's and I you, I know that you don't know about this. And it's crazy, Colleen. I've been literally, I was excited. I wanted to do this episode today just to talk about specifically do, this. Do, do. Is it Did you hear about the Pop-Tarts cancellation <laughs> that went so viral? Pop they, Pop-Tarts, got canceled? canceled because they did a campaign where the goal of it was, like, people want to eat the Pop-Tart. Like, the Pop-Tarts and a mascot, talking about Duolingo, except they started to eat it alive. So, like, you literally see it being, like, the they mascot? rip its skin off. <laughs> Colleen, they rip its skin off. And it's just, like, red underneath it. One eyeball pops out. <laughs> and it went so viral that they started getting canceled because people, moms, were pit, were upset that their little kids were watching their favorite snack getting eaten alive. Right? No, I love that. This cancellation then goes so viral that it becomes a meme on Twitter, it becomes a meme template. There are tweets with like 6 million views, 1 million views, tens of thousands of retweets, right? Then immediately after that, because it became so viral, Pop-Tarts SEO hit a lifetime high in the entire history of the company. And they had a $200 million sales increase from 2022 to the end of 2023. So it was one of those examples where like one, they definitely did not plan it to happen exactly. that way. Exactly. Did not plan it to happen that way. But I do think it's this interesting thing of how the internet loves to feel like a participant. Yes. Like once that started to snowball out of control, everybody was just like, taking it and adding these pop charts to like memes and stuff. And I'll put them on screen. Like they wow. are so funny. And now Pop-Tarts has like completely started to brand themselves around. They do other commercials where like the Pop-Tarts purpose in life is to get eaten. Oh, <laughs> and it's, it's like liquid death. Yes, like, exactly. And it's just, I don't know. I thought that was the most interesting thing ever. I'm going to show you like some of the pictures okay. after this calling. You're going to 
cry. It's crazy. Wow. And I mean, I'm a big believer in like, I don't always believe that all press is good press, but in that case, I... It, it sounds like it worked. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, it's also crazy because I'm sure for a point they were panicking. Yeah. Oh, there were <laughs> there were Google Hangouts on people's calendars. Oh, yeah. Somebody almost got fired. Emails were sent. Until somebody was like, never mind, we love you, come back. Yes, <laughs> yes. Also, you guys, um, we're trying to make this a new thing. Emails have been sent. That's like emails my new thing. Emails have been sent. Like anytime something happens, you That's just right. know emails have been sent. Haley Baber, emails have been sent. Emails have been sent. Questions. Yes. Um, okay, go for your pop culture. I'd love to hear. Okay, so... Number one, are you seeing the conversation around Madam Webb? Yes. The interviews of her are so funny. And for anyone who doesn't know, there's essentially this idea or belief that Dakota Johnson, mm -hmm. the actress in the new Madam Webb, s allegedly signed on thinking it was going to be a part of the MCU, the Marvel Disney universe, mm -hmm. but was misled. And it was actually the Sony's version of the spider universe which is crazy she ended up according to an article by inside the magic dropped her team at wme the week that the trailer came out because <laughs> it was getting roasted um the reason people think that dakota johnson thought that it was a mcu film and not a sony film is there's a couple things when she posted her original announcement on instagram that she got the role she tagged the mcu so did sydney sweeney and then she also was saying in an interview that she ran into elizabeth olsen in a hotel lobby the scarlet witch mm -hmm. from the disney plus series and she asked her about being in the mcu and elizabeth was like no that's great we love it and then the movie starts to come out there was uh, i mean i i actually feel kind of bad like the the score on Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> is so bad. I think it's at 14%, which makes me actually want to go see it. No, I there is a magic to when a movie is so bad that everybody just, it's it's a comedy now. And exactly. I want to see it for a comedy. I agree. I agree. And one top critic on Rotten Tomatoes said this about the film. Even Dakota Johnson has her limits. And Madam Web blows so far past them that you can... <laughs> You can particularly guess which scenes were shot last based on the degree, the degree to which a star has given up. <laughs> and I watched a Straw Hat Goofy review of the film, and mm -hmm. he's usually very positive, and he says he doesn't like... He said the film was, like, so bad that it, there were points where they had to, like, clearly dub over what the people were saying, but that, like, they didn't even care to match up, like, the people's mouths with, like, the words that they ended up having. So their mouths weren't saying what the words were saying. We need to see it. Please. <laughs> we can we? see it. I'm so down to see it. I'm so down to see it, too. This make I think they need to lean into how bad it is because that makes me want to go see it. No, literally, I think that they rebrand it as, like, scary movie, but for the MCU. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Can someone do a scary movie for scary the MCU? Scary movie series about the MCU would be a money maker. Nikki, you need to brand Thank that. Thank you. Emails have been sent. Emails have been sent <laughs> to Marlon Wayans. Been sent. How do we make that a movie? Literally a like it's it's gonna happen because the MCU has just taken over so much. And I think that this, even though it was Sony, I think also is just like this catacosm of like superhero fatigue. And oh, almost, yeah. I think some actors, and it sounds like this is what's happening with Dakota, almost feeling like they're selling out. Yeah. But then like she was mad that like she sold out and it still wasn't even what she thought it was going to be. <laughs> Sadly. No, I, the MCU thing is so real. Did you know that Timothy Chalamet and Leonardo DiCaprio met for the first time and he asked him advice on like what should i do like how can i become an actor at your level and the one thing he told him never do a superhero movie <gasps> whoa <laughs> i thought that was so funny because it's true it does yeah. really put you in a box it puts you in a i mean it sets you up for life yeah but and another thing that dakota john that dakota johnson said is that she like was just talking mad ish on the filming of it and she's like filming in front of a blue screen which is like a green screen she goes filming in front of a blue screen was absolutely psychotic like she hated <laughs> the entire process you're like okay now that building's gonna explode now yeah. you have to duck and like yeah. yeah that's crazy so i just had to talk about that is there any pop culture things you want to touch on um no but i think we should talk about what we're going to the people's choice Awards. 
Guys, we're going to the People's Choice Awards. It's uh, Kylie Minogue's performing that song. Like, but I'm, but I'm, I'm feeling it. I, I'm going to enter another plane of reality when I hear that song live. I, do you know who else is performing? Because I'm just going off vibes. That, that's honestly, I, that could be the only one. I'm, like, I'm ready. Yeah. We are going. Um, so I'm going to see if I can vlog it. We might not be able to, but if we can, if I can sneak a camera in and get some clips, I feel like guys, they want us I'm going to do it. I feel like they want us to. Yeah, true. Um, I guess like one other thing I can talk about um, too really quickly is just that. Did you see Zendaya at the Zune, Dune premiere? Dude, serving serving okay here's what it made me think of the robotic outfit it was my favorite designer Mugler I say that as if I don't wear like American Eagle every day anyways <laughs> my favorite designer Mugler I think Zendaya is gonna wear that brand to the Met Gala this year mm. here's a couple reasons one Mugler was obsessed with aliens and insects and I went to a museum in Paris this year and they had one of Mugler's old sketchbooks and he would just sketch insects over and over because he thought that that was the closest thing we would ever get to extraterrestrials. Whoa. He's the one who designed Beyonce's like beehive, like headgear that she wore at the Renaissance tour. Mm -hmm. So Zendaya showed up in that robotic outfit, which was vintage Mugler. Zendaya was just announced yesterday as one of the co-hosts of the Met Gala this year. Yeah. So she's going to be there. And the theme is the Garden of Time. To me, garden, nature, insects, time, robotics, future. And like, yeah. I think this Met Gala is going to show that like nature and robotics are more intertwined than we think. I think that this is just like one of the best themes we've had in a while. I agree. I think we're going to see a lot of insects. I think we're going to see a lot of flowers, botanicals. Mm -hmm. But again, I think we're going to see robots. In like I would love it if somebody wore a dress that was actually entirely made of like real plants. Like oh, flowers and, it like and stuff. biodegraded. Sewn together sewn together i because it's i'm sure possible at the very least yeah. you can create pieces that are completely covered even there's fabric underneath holding it together like i think somebody's literally going to show up as like an entire garden and what if it changes on the carpet like when blake lively or lady gaga <sighs> they've done that mm -hmm. also and like to your point as well kind of this like um garden insect that's gonna i think again it aligns with pluto and aquarius which is going to be taking over the next 20 years Alex Kansani, a runway model who's really big on uh, TikTok as well, was just walking in the Tom Brown show yesterday and was like the finale big moment of the show. And she was dressed as a golden bee. So she had <laughs> these like, and it was this insect. Like, yeah. Yeah, you guys, this theme of insects and robots coming together is going to be the fashion trend of like honestly, the next that 20 would, years. Honestly, it'd be a great movie concept. Terminator there insect. Let's talk about it. Let's do. That's a Black Mirror episode. Emails have been sent. Emails have been sent. Have been sent. And I wanted to also just like humbly brag for you, oh. UCLA. Yes, I um spoke at a guest as a guest lecture at UCLA, which was so exciting. I think I might have gotten rejected from there. Maybe it was I was UC rejected too. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. remember. Honestly, I might have not applied. I definitely got rejected from some schools in California. Yeah. So it was a nice retribution moment for me. But um what was I the got class? To, it was like a marketing and branding class. Wow. But I really talked about like why I think um, essentially like content creation is the printing press of our generation and that we communicate in the form of content more than we communicate even with real life people. Like yeah. you send more texts, more DMs, you post more Instagram stories than you have conversations with a person in 24 hours and how important oh. that is. Like no matter where you go, whether you're behind the scenes, whether you want to be a creator, whether you work in an agency, advertising, anything like you will touch this somehow. Um and I think they loved it. Also, there's three people in the class who said they listened to the pod. So hello. Hello. Hi. Um, thank you for being so kind. And there's like yes. there's people that like, came out and talked to me afterwards. And they're like, you're our favorite speaker we've ever had. It was just like a really big moment for me. And it's also been a dream of mine to get into like academia mm -hmm. for a while. Because I just felt like my college experience was so unsatisfying mm -hmm. in regards to learning about specific things on the internet. Like, I had some very brilliant professors, but the average age of them was like 40 to 60. Right. And I'm like, I think that there's some things that you just cannot understand about this. Like mm -hmm. part pieces of internet culture or memes or trends that like, unless you grew up with this, you adopted it in your adult life. Mm -hmm. Like this is all I've known and all that the, those kids had or students have mm -hmm. known too. And like, I don't know, it was really cool to talk about that and they even said that at the beginning they're like i think you're the best person we've ever had at just like explaining these concepts it's like things we've learned about but no one like could articulate it in a way so um, i don't know it just really did a lot and thank you for everybody for being so nice yes and, and if, 
Oh, sorry. I was going to say, maybe one day you'll get into like live events too. And if you Dude, guys would I be would interested. Lo- I, it's a career dream of mine to go on like a tour, like a college tour. Yeah. It's so, like where I just speak at a bunch of them. Also, if any listeners, you go to school in California, email me. I have your and professors have email Mickey, me. That I would love me- to come. That makes me think of the reason I chose San Diego State. This is so bad is because there was this one um, YouTube channel that has since been taken down. It's called I'm Schmacked. <laughs> <laughs> and they would go on college tours. They would just go party with schools. And like my freshman year, I'm Schmacked came to SDCU to film like a part two. And I was like foaming at the mouth. I didn't get in to the party. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to. Anyways, that was how. Yeah. So that's a college tour, but not the kind that you're going to go on. Not the Maybe kind I'm going to go on. Hopefully at not. least not on the record. Maybe after <laughs> no, this. No, I'm not going on that type of college tour. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not David Dobrik. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah. Yeah, and check out the vlog of us at the Super Bowl. It yes. was crazy. Check out the vlog. Um, subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Leave us reviews. And next week will be the Coachella deep dive. So go ahead and leave your comments down below what topics you want us to hit on that. Mm-hmm. Because we're going to go Or if there's any in. headliners that you loved yes. in the past you'd like us to deep dive on, let us know. Mm-hmm. And we'll see you all next week. Bye.